So I'm going to talk about trust, and I'm going to start by reminding you of the standard views that people have about trust. I think these are so commonplace, they've become cliches of our society, and I think there are three. Uh, one's a claim. There has been a great decline in trust, very widely believed. The second is an aim. We should have more trust. And the third is a task. We should rebuild trust in trust. Secondly, what about the aim? The aim is to have more trust. Well, frankly, I think that's a stupid aim. It's not what I would aim at. I would aim to have more trust in the trustworthy, but not in the untrustworthy. <laughs> in fact, I aim positively to try not to trust the untrustworthy. <laughs> and I think of those people who, for example, placed their savings with the very aptly made, uh, named Mr. Madoff, who then made off with them. <laughs> and I think of them and I think, well, yes, uh, too, too much trust. More trust is not an intelligent aim in this life. Intelligently placed and intelligently refused trust is the proper aim. Well, once one said that, one says, yeah, okay, that means that what matters in the first place is not trust, but trustworthiness. It's judging how trustworthy people are in particular respects. And I think that judgment requires us to look at three things. Are they competent? Are they honest? Are they reliable? And if we find that a person is competent in the relevant matters and reliable and honest, we'll have a pretty good reason to trust them because they'll be trustworthy. But if, on the other hand, they're unreliable, we might not. I have friends who are competent and honest, but I would not trust them to post a letter because they're forgetful. <laughs> I have friends who are very confident they can do certain things, uh, but I realize that they overestimate their own competence. And I'm very glad to say I don't think I have many friends who are competent and reliable, but extremely dishonest. <laughs> if so, I haven't yet spotted it. <laughs> but that's what we're looking for. Trustworthiness before trust. Trust is the response. Trustworthiness is what we have to judge. And of course, it's difficult. Across the last few decades, we tried to construct systems of accountability for all sorts of institutions and professionals and officials and so on that will make it easier for us to judge their trustworthiness. A lot of these systems have the converse effect. They don't work as they're supposed to. I remember I was uh, uh, talking with a midwife who said, well, you see, the problem is it takes longer to do the paperwork than to deliver the baby. And all over our public life, our institutional life, we find that problem, that the system of accountability that is meant to secure trustworthiness and, and evidence of trustworthiness is actually doing the opposite. It is distracting people who have to do difficult tasks, like midwives, from doing them by requiring them to tick the boxes, as we say. You can all give your own examples there. So, so much for the aim. The aim, I think, is more trustworthiness, and that is going to be different if we're trying to be trustworthy and communicate our trustworthiness to other people, and if we are trying to judge whether other people or office holders or politicians are trustworthy. It's not easy. It is judgment, and simple reaction attitudes don't do, uh, do adequately here. Now, thirdly, the task. Calling the task rebuilding trust, I think, also gets things backwards. It suggests that you and I should rebuild trust. Well, we can do that for ourselves. We can rebuild a bit of trustworthiness. We can do it two people together, trying to improve trust. But trust, in the end, is distinctive because it's given by other people. You can't rebuild what other people give you. You have to give them the basis for giving you their trust. So you have to, I think, be trustworthy. And that, of course, is because you can't fool all of the people all of the time, usually. Uh, but you also have to provide usable evidence that you are trustworthy. How to do it? 
Well, every day, all over the place, it's being done by ordinary people, by officials, by institutions, quite effectively. Let me give you a simple commercial example. The shop where I buy my socks says I may take them back. And if they don't ask any questions, they take them back and give me the money or give me the pair of socks of the color I wanted. That's super. I trust them because they have made themselves vulnerable to me. I think there's a big lesson in that. If you make yourself vulnerable to the other party, then that is very good evidence that you are trustworthy and you have confidence in what you are saying. So in the end, I think what we're aiming for is not very difficult to discern. It is relationships in which people are trustworthy and can judge when and how the other person is trustworthy. 